Experts. Joining us right now to get ahead of it is the Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer, Founder and Managing Partner, also the author of DividendCafe.com, David Bonson back with us. David, great to see you. Good to see you. So I know you're a, you're a dividend investor. I want to ask you about that. But first, assess the earnings period for us. What have you learned? Well, what's interesting is that earnings year over year look like they're going to come in about 5.7% higher than the year before. Nobody was expecting that, and it is not recessionary. Revenues are only up 1.2%. So basically, at the earnings trough in this really difficult cycle of Fed tightening, they didn't drop that much. They only dropped about 4 or 5%. But sales haven't grown a lot. So margins really have improved, and margins appear to be sticky. Companies are just good at what they do, and they can overcome bad policies quite a bit. What about rates? I mean, that's really been the issue and the pressure for corporate America as well as individuals. The 10-year Treasury yield this morning is back down to 4.581%. Yeah. What a move below 5%. The head of the Federal Reserve, Chairman Jay Powell's remarks this morning. Uh, by the way, Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Waller said the third quarter U.S. GDP was a blowout performance despite strong economic new data signals uh, are showing us a slowdown is on the way fellow fed governor lisa cook said this morning that we must quote remain vigilant to potential shocks that could exacerbate global financial system vulnerabilities david yeah you saw with kashkari yesterday they're in that period where these fed governors are off their leash and they're allowed to say a bunch of yeah. things that i don't think Powell wants them out saying um, the GDP number was a big number, but too much of it came from inventories, which is uh, pretty consistently a one-quarter thing. Business investment is still nothing. And that's the problem. That's what's sustainable is non-residential fixed investment. The, the, all the talk about the consumer drives me crazy. The consumer in America is going to spend, always. Yeah. It will never change. The only time they stop spending is when they run out of credit. They're not out of credit. They have tons of equity in their home. They all have jobs. They have pretty good wages. Well, that's the thing. that They're using credit cards. Or they're even tapping into savings. Does that and the savings rate gets very low, and people yeah. think that's a good thing. Keynesians believe low saving is a good thing. It isn't. You want a healthy savings rate because the inevitability of tough times in the economy. Yeah, Adam. Uh, David, I am a generally a tech investor as a growth investor. Um, I don't often look at the consumer from an investment point of view. Should I be looking at the consumer right now? Is the consumer stronger than I'm giving him or her credit for? Well, the answer is yes, the consumer is stronger, and no, you shouldn't be looking at it because it is in inevitably going to be fickle. My ability to pick what my daughter is going to want to wear tomorrow is not very good. She's a 16-year-old girl. Picking what all uh, kids are going to want to wear or what, you know, different consumer groups, fads, it is just inevitably, first of all, it's over-levered. There's a ton of debt in the consumer discretionary sector. But second of all, it's hard to predict. There's more consistency and other things that I think lend themselves to dividend growth. But now I'm talking my book. Monica. Yeah. There have been conflicting projections about the holiday season. Some project a strong one. Some project a weak one. Yeah. What's your view? My view is that nobody knows and anyone who's giving an opinion is making it up. And this is about five years in a row of people being wrong in that prediction. Either it's predicted to be soft, it ends up being stronger, or vice versa. They are expecting it soft this year. My guess is it is reasonably soft, but a little bit better than expected. Well, one positive certainly is the price of oil coming down. Yeah. Because we were talking about oil, you know, pushing to toward 90, $100 a barrel. But this morning, we're looking at crude oil at 76.76. That's down three quarters of a percent right now. This is the lowest level since July, and partly because of what we're seeing happening in China, reporting mixed economic data, overshadowing the rising tensions in the Middle East. How important is oil staying around these levels to a strong performance for the stock market? The, well, it's very important, but the problem is that oil at 77, 76 right now, it's been there for about two days, and it was at 85 before that. It's very volatile. Most of the year, it was in the mid-70s. The SPR didn't get refilled at all. They didn't buy back what they said they were going to, and it was between 67 and 75. Right. If I were them right now at 76, I don't think it holds here, but if it were going to, this is where the Department of Energy should be refilling. Holds, or you think it goes higher? Absolutely. Yeah. The upward pressure is significant. If China gets any better growth than expected, not to mention Middle East uh, volatility, I, I, we may have noticed it's a little sketchy over there right yeah. now, too. Right. So how do you want to allocate capital then going into year end? Are you expecting a year end rally? 
Um, it, I, I have no opinion ever about what the market's going to do in that short period of a time. I can, there's always reasons it could rally, and there's reasons it could not. My issue is that more, in a more longer-term sense, I think you want better stability right now. And I think Adam is a really good growth investor. PE expansion matters in, in your yes. business. Yes. It matters less for us as cash flow dividend growth investors, right? I'm a little less concerned about valuations expanding, which means the bond yields don't have to affect us as much. I think that you get good free cash flow growth. Energy is a wonderful sector. A lot of the financials have been beaten down. We're doing very well with asset managers that are growing their dividend. And then I really think consumer staples, um, it's going to be sticky. Okay. The input prices have come down. They've passed it on to consumers. Those margins are going to stay. There's some good opportunity. What's there. your favorite dividend payer? Oh, I have so many. Right now, I will point out Simon Property because it fascinates me for all the talk about the death of retail. Yeah. They have the highest occupancy they've ever had at the highest per foot they've ever had. What's the dividend? Paying over 7% dividend. Wow, it's that's all coming number. from net operating income. Great. Good one. All right, David, good to see you. Thanks, Maria. Thanks so much. David Bonson joining us.